Um, let me in introduce some background about uh, Axelotti. Um, yeah, just I skip this. Uh, so, um, sorry. Um, I see uh, two tools that are really popular in this um, music technology community because they enable they're like merged communities of programmers and artists, and I, I don't want to make a division line between them, and that's where they're really powerful at. Um, but sometimes it's, um, it's annoying to have a PC on stage or to deal with a PC in, in performance. It's hard to play music and forget. If, you, if you're using a laptop, it's hard to forget that there's a laptop somewhere running. You can't, if you make an installation, it's hard to, to hide the laptop somewhere and forget about it because PCs are, they need care. Um, it's not a set and forget system. Um, lots of work has been done with Arduino, but Arduino is not really suitable for making um, sound. It's just input output, and I wouldn't use it for much more than that, for inter than interfacing. Um, so ultimately, you probably connect it to a, to, um, a PC running Max or Pure Data or anything else to produce sound. Then, uh, more recent is the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's more capable of, um, it's almost capable of running pure data, um, but that's quite a learning curve. Um, you're still like, you're, you're a Linux system administrator, and I wouldn't say it's a set and forget system. Um, so I add something new to that, to this family of tools. Um, I've created a, a patch-based audio pro programming environment that generates like um, source code that can run on embedded hardware um, and also interact with it. So the idea is to create a smooth um, pa path from um, creating a patch to something you can um, fit in a box or turn into an installation. Um, and you put, yeah. Um, so the, the logo and the, the name comes from this animal. Um, it's called an axolotl with the L in the end, and it lives in Mexico. Um, so uh, it's like four outputs on the top and two inputs on the bottom. I made a board design to run um, audio, to run the audio engine. It's, um, the design is made for audio. All the connectors are made on one side. Um, so unlike with the Raspberry Pi, you have connectors running on all sides. If you want to turn it into a, a box, you, have, you probably end up with a, um, a sandwich box filled with spaghetti of cables and boards to extend it before it gets useful. Um, so it's MIDI in, MIDI out. SD card for samples and patches. Uh, USB for um, programming, headphone, stereo in and stereo out. Uh, you can put it in a box easily. Um, and this is a patcher. Um, so um, it's, uh, I think the, the set of objects is familiar for, for um, people coming from Max or, or Pure Data. It's about oscillators, filters, envelopes. Um, counters, sequencing, you, you can build all sorts of things. You can easily make polyphonic virtual analog synthesizers. You, you can do uh, polyphonic sample playback or mix algorithmic sequencers. Um, um, and this is like, yeah, I, I wanted to make an open system because I could mount it into a box and, and mount a stump box switch, a floor switch, foot switch to it, and aim it for use for guitar players, but I, I would say that it doesn't do it justice. I could make a tabletop version and give it four, four knobs and three buttons and two LEDs, but I wouldn't say that would do justice to every, I think every 
I, I want to bring it up to the user to make a specific like um, skin on, on, the, on the hardware level. And that really comes down to, to uh, connecting sensors. And I mean, similar to Arduino, you can have all um, or a lot of um, electrical I.O. for whatever purpose. Um, the technology behind this um, is a GUI programmed in Java that generates source code. And with the click of a button, it launches the compiler, will upload the binary into the board, uh, start running the code on the target board, and while it's running, can also um, interact with parameters. You can make changes to parameters, or you can also have readback. You can have like little charts or oscilloscopes or um, LEDs on screen in the, in the patcher. Uh, you don't need to mess with make files or compiler setup. Um, so, uh, by shortening the, up the edit compiler run development cycle, this encourages experimentation and, um, yeah. Um, open source is fundamental to the project, although currently it's unreleased, that will follow very soon. I just want to make sure that it's a certain uh, degree of quality before I make a release. Uh, and the current state has around 400 different objects. The Java GUI is like 40,000 lines of code. Um, and you can do like virtual analog synthesis, uh, delay-based effects, sampling, um, interfacing with low-level electronics is really easy. Um, make any sort of sequencer like structures. Um, for me, uh, work in progress is uh, still some usability improvements. It uh, currently runs already on, um, well, already from the beginning. It runs on uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac. Um, I'm still developing a USB host interface. There are a lot of new USB controllers don't have the five pole MIDI plug like from the 70s, but they only have a USB uh, plug, which is sort of annoying because USB has a, like a device site and a host site. Um, and you, you, and I, it's with um, lots of modern equipment doesn't allow a synthesizer to be plugged into a controller because of the host and device sites. Most, devi most devices are only device, not, not host. Um, this is a look at the patcher. So here you see some um, uh, different tracks for for drum lines, and uh, and then the DSP code to generate sounds. Um, but I think the best example I can give is not making an example by myself, but um, one made um, by Carl. He made a music tech fest in in um, Berlin. Carl made a. Um, um, a conversion from a reactor patch to Axolotti in 24 hours. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't make it. Call me there. <laughs> and that's, I mean, yeah. let's, uh, let's have him play. Okay. Um, should I say something about it, maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, as Johannes was pointing out, this is a uh, the name of the project is the metaphysical, um, what was it, metaphysical function cardboard fork. And um, yeah, it's derived from the, from the great, of, of my favorite reactor patch, the metaphysical function. It's a kind of like, um, it's a, I would call it a sound generator, a sound generating synthesizer. And yeah, it was the first time that I got in touch with the Axolotti board. And of course, um, Johannes helped me with um, kind of getting into all of this, but this is kind of what I could come up with within 40, uh, 24 hours. And I made this, um, made this thing um, and also had to make the software for it. Yeah, okay, let's hear it.
Great, thanks, Carl. Yeah. I think one of the f features that is really that you can really feel in in this uh, demo, if you work with the MIDI controller, it's often like 128 steps, and you hear the quantization in steps, and here it's feeding directly into the converters, sample, sampling the the potentiometers, the knobs at at um, 4,000 steps. Um, and at 3,000 updates a second, so it has an analog feel to it. And uh, or one of one of the features a PC can't, can't reach is the, the the full system latency from analog in to analog out is like under two milliseconds. Um, so yeah. So what's next uh, is um, growing the user community. I think there's around 25 users um, that have a prototype and are delivering like feedback on on the on the system um, very soon will come um, the public source code release and probably a crowdfunding campaign to set up the board production so please have a look at um, my website axolotti.be there is a, you can re register for announcements and then you get an email if, so, if something happens. And if you have any, any questions or feedback, please write me an email or grab me around here. Thank you.